Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Thanks for joining us. I'm Whitney Ward. A new report released by the Bonner County Sheriff's Office this afternoon shows evidence of fraud at the fair. An investigation found hundreds of thousands of dollars may have been taken by the former fair director. Grip 2 Shannon Mowdy has been sifting through the report. She is here now to break it down for us. Shannon? Well, the criminal investigation started last fall, centering around then fair director Darcy Smith. We're now getting a look at what Sandpoint police found, showing she may have taken more than $200,000. The Bonner County Sheriff's Office sent out 20 redacted pages of a Sandpoint police report, showing some of the alleged fraud committed by Fair Director Darcy Smith. Smith died by suicide during the investigation last October four days after a police interview. The sheriff's office says suspicion started in June 2022 when someone tipped off the county's HR department that Smith used fair funds for personal purchases. But Sheriff Daryl Wheeler says Smith tried to block an internal investigation by filing a harassment grievance against the HR team. And then County Commissioner Dan McDonald supported her effort to hamper the investigation. Sheriff Wheeler says McDonald insisted the HR team be taken off the case and falsely claimed the county commissioners would investigate. A Bonner County prosecutor launched a criminal case in October because of the blocked internal investigation. According to the police report, Sandpoint police looked into Smith's fair and personal accounts and found evidence of numerous unauthorized checks and missing deposits of fair profits. The report says Smith wrote more than $20,000 worth of checks to various people for fair help but none of those people worked for the county. In addition, she also wrote more than $8,000 in checks to her own son, who also wasn't a county employee. Investigators also found a deposit for rodeo ticket sales was about $5,000 short and couldn't find where that missing money went. The report states Smith had access to fair bank accounts with little oversight from the fair board and open numerous accounts without authorization. In all, investigators were able to confirm just over $40,000 was misappropriated by Smith, but another 206000 was suspected of being misappropriated but couldn't be proven. Sheriff Daryl Wheeler says the full extent of the theft can't be calculated since the fair is mainly a cash business. The Bonner County Sheriff's Office declined to speak with us, saying the report speaks for itself. We've also reached out to Sandpoint's police chief, as well as the fair and county officials, and haven't heard back, so it's unclear if anyone else is being investigated. Shannon Mowdy, Krem2 News. Shannon, thank you. And another big story we are tracking today, the military conviction of Bo Bergdahl thrown out by a federal judge. Bergdahl is the Army soldier from Haley, Idaho, who walked away from his post in Afghanistan in 2009 and was then kidnapped by the Taliban. He was held as a prisoner for five years until being released as part of a controversial prisoner swap under President Obama. When he returned home, he was court-martialed and pleaded guilty to desertion. But yesterday, a federal judge in D.C. vacated his conviction, saying the military judge who oversaw the original case failed to disclose a possible conflict of interest. That's because at the time, the military judge had applied for a job under President Trump, who had publicly railed against Bergdahl, calling him, quote, a traitor who deserved to be executed. Now, this is a story we have covered extensively here at Crime 2 for more than a decade. Back in 2015, actually, I spoke with one retired Army sergeant who was part of that initial search for Bergdahl. At the time, he told me that Bergdahl needed to be held accountable. He still needs to be held accountable for his actions. He's still responsible for his actions. And his actions caused a lot of damage. And tonight, as Krem2 brings you more to every story, we track down that same retired sergeant to get his reaction to yesterday's court decision. We are joined in the studio tonight by Nathan Hyun with more. Nathan? Well, Army Sergeant Nathan Bott served three tours in Afghanistan. He was part of the same battalion as Bo Bergdahl. When he talked with Bots today, he said his feelings about what happened haven't changed. Former Army Surgeon Nathan Botts was part of the initial platoon that searched for Bo Bergdahl in 2009. The military estimates as many as six U.S. soldiers died as part of that search. I lost friends looking for him. Bot says when Bergdahl went missing, the military's entire focus turned to finding him. Our whole mission changed to go looking for him. Now you, your focus 
is on search and rescue or search and recovery instead of engaging with the enemy. Bergdahl claimed he left his post in Afghanistan in hopes of alerting his army general of poor management in his unit. But Botts tells me it was a selfish move from the very beginning. He betrayed our trust. And if you betray that trust that you're not going to protect them, that betrayal, you can never come back from that. The search for Bergdahl went on for weeks. Botts and his battalion personally looked for him from July of 2009 to February of 2010. And he says every day they were putting their lives on the line. So when Botts learned this week that a judge vacated Bergdahl's dishonorable discharge, he was furious. I take it personal and I know that everybody in the unit that would that's going to hear about this is going to take it personal. This is against us. And even though more than a decade has passed, he says he still believes Bergdahl needs to face the consequences of his actions. I think he should have stayed in prison. I think he should have had a, a life sentence. It's been more than 10 years. Why does this still bother you? Why wouldn't it? You know, it's... Mm, betrayal is betrayal, and that will never leave. Nathan Botts also tells me he hopes these new developments spark another trial. He wants to see Bergdahl behind bars. In the studio, Nathan Hyun, Krem 2 News. Well, now it may be difficult to restart a trial this many years later for Bergdahl. That's partly due to witnesses typically scattering and not staying in the same place. It is possible that both sides decide another trial is just not worth their time anymore. As of right now, there has not been an official decision to retry the case in military court. If you want to read more about our coverage, just head to our website. That's Krem.com. In the meantime, let's take a break from the headlines and talk about weather. As much of the country sits through sweltering heat, we have enjoyed a couple of days in the 80s. It's been really nice. So to tell us more about the slightly cooler temperatures and the change back to heat now is our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Legou. Unfortunately, we don't get to stay here. It's just the way it goes. But as we head through the next few days, the heat is back on and summer is here. 79 degrees in Spokane as we speak. Wind quite a bit lighter than where it's been the past couple of days and all across the inland northwest. Those temps hover pretty close to 80. 80 in Deer Park, 79 in Sandpoint. And get this, Pullman, Moscow, mid to upper 70s, near 80 out in central Washington. All in all, not looking too bad. Overnight, we cool down quite significantly once again. I don't think quite as cold as where we started the day today, but still a bit cooler nonetheless. By the time I think we get to about 8 or 9 tomorrow morning, we should be back in the 60s and warming. But overall, we don't have much. We don't even have much to give us any sort of cloud cover. So the next few days, it is all about the sunshine. Tomorrow, we're going to top out in the mid-80s. Believe it or not, 86 is seasonal, 88 is seasonal, 90 is seasonal. But we go from 86 to 88 to 90. But look at those overnight lows. We climb from the mid 50s to the upper 50s, and then those daytime highs just keep soaring next week. Coming up in the full forecast, we're talking some sweltering days ahead.